back to the front, give you an update what's going on with the flooring. There are a couple major issues with it. I discovered I have a pest called powder post beetles. There's like some fungus or mushrooms growing out of the crack between the wall. So I did some exploratory demo, ripped up the floor there. It was totally rotted out. We are back and ready to do the hardwood flooring in the main living area. We're gonna be doing diagonal flooring here. We're basically gonna be keeping the old wood flooring as a subfloor for the new wood floor. So this is kind of funny. Who, whoever installed the old wood floor, they knew you had to leave a three quarter inch gap between the wood floor and the walls to allow for expansion and contraction. So come look at this. They used a piece of the three quarter inch flooring as a spacer they never removed it. It stuck in there. And so now any expansion at all, and it just started popping. It definitely popped a lot. There's spots where there are huge humps in the floor. We're gonna rip out all the floorboards that are not level and replace it with some plywood that's three quarter inch. That's the same height as the uh, existing floorboards. So it'll be a combination between the hardwood floors and the plywood that act as a subfloor. Just discovered there's some old tile underneath the hardwood floor. This is like a parfait of flooring. You know what else everybody like? Parfait. Just chipping away. So I think the parts where we've cut it away, we're just gonna remove that old tile, then have to get some thin Luan plywood so that we can shim the three quarters inch plywood up to be level with the wood floor that we're leaving. So, uh, Mike and Jacob are messing around, working hard. So I'm left, you know, recording all of this stuff. You guys know who's actually working hard. This is where we had all the, the mushrooms or fungus growing. There's definitely a wave in the floor here. It could just be from the water warping. There could actually be some mushrooms or fungus growing under the floorboards. So I'm gonna just rip out a chunk here that seems to be affected and replace that with some new uh, plywood just to make sure that, that we've got a stable subfloor up to the edge of the window here. So I think the subfloor underneath the old wood floors appears to have been completely rotted out. I guess I gotta do some exploratory demo now and just see how, how extensive that rotting is. I'm glad I opened that up because it is totally rotted. I mean, you put your wit right through it and it's also just soaked. All that moisture that was getting in there, I think I need to open it up and, and definitely let it dry out too. There's a hole. Holy crap. Now the surprises just never cease. I ended up cutting out a whole chunk of wood all the way through so that it opened up the floor between the lower floor and the upper floor. They kind of tucked the two layers of plywood subfloor under the masonry into the steel I-beam that was supporting the window. Really odd, this is kind of a patchwork uh, building. One of my viewers sent me on Discord a picture of how the building used to look. I'll try to pull it up here. And you can see they redid the entryway. Well, I guess when they redid it, they kind of just laid the window on top of the I-beam and they didn't bother to fill the I-beam on the inside of the wall like we did in the masonry in the back. I'm honestly not sure if that's okay. So once I got this up, I discovered there was a bigger problem than just rotted subfloor. The joists that support the floor running this way are actually resting right on the steel lintel for the front door. You'll get condensation on the inside of the metal when there's differences in the temperature inside and outside. 
that condensation will lead to moisture and cause the wood to get wet and over time probably rot. So I need to redo the framing here. Now the good news, we actually have a steel beam running here and another steel beam running right here. So all we have to do is redo this section right here. The plan is to chop these joists off so they stop short of the steel beam, then run a ledger, a two by 12. We're gonna bolt it to the brick right here and then run it to the steel beam that's right here. Then we'll use some hangers to tie the joist to the board that's running across the front. And that way it'll be a solid structure, but there'll be some separation between the joist and the metal for the door. But I apologize right now for bad audio. My mic ran out of battery, so I'm just running a gun in with the camera's mic. So I'll be quick. The floor is cleared out. I got Jacob here to help, and we're about to start laying down the underlayment in the living room, which is super exciting to start seeing some finishes go in here. You got the underlayment down and now is normally when you just start laying the flooring. But we've got that powder post beetle issue to address. Hi, how are you? This is one of the boards I pulled out that had powder post beetle damage. So you can see there how the, the larvae hatched on the underside of the wood and bored their way up through the top to make all those little holes. As I understand it, their life cycle is such that the larvae can last two or three years. So there may still actually be some larvae on the underside of the boards that are there and they may still bore their way up. And I don't really care if there's holes in this as long as it's structurally sound. What I care about is stopping it after one life cycle. Without the water from the roof leaking, based on my research, we'll probably end the life cycle right there like without enough moisture in the floor for them to lay their eggs and for their eggs to hatch. But just in case they do have that last one life cycle where some larvae hatch and burrow their way up through what is now gonna be the subfloor, I don't want them to then continue to burrow up through the new wood floor. So what I'm gonna do is treat the underside of the new wood floor before we lay it down with something called Boracare. Apparently this will kill the adults or the larvae when they burrow up through the wood. So having this on the underside of the wood will kind of prevent them from ever making their way into the new wood floor. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. It's showtime. I'm not gonna lie that I'm a little bit uneasy after we wetted down the bottoms of these about installing them. I'm not gonna sit around and wait for another week or two because honestly, I just, I don't have that time. We're careful to just do a pretty light coat so it's not gonna like saturate the entire wood. And I don't see any expansion of the wood. So I think we're okay. Before the hardwood flooring install, we proudly present a special edition of fictional true crime stories. Stories. Three years ago, I had everything. Money, friends, power. I had a good hustle going. I had a living room, 10 TVs, five volt watches on each arm. Then one night, I was on what seemed like an easy gig. We'd been staking it out for a week. Everything was clear. Went through the window, and three minutes later, the lights were flashing everywhere. The cops pulled up. Turns out they had Simply Safe. Simply Safe's 24 7 monitoring service. Called the cops right away as soon as I entered. There's no way I was making it out of the home with that TV. And worse, everything I did was captured on Simply Safe Simply Can. 
They had all the evidence they needed to put me away, and that's where I'm at now. I'm not sure what I'm going to do when I get out of here. I don't have any other skills. Everyone's doing really simply safe now, protecting their homes. I've got no way to get in anymore. They've got motion sensors, glass break sensors, and cameras capture everything. All I can do is ask you from the bottom of my heart, don't buy Simply Safe. Don't do it. I know they're giving 20% off to all the Dust Room Major subscribers right now. Just please don't buy it, please. You don't need to protect your home. Go on vacation. Leave your door unlocked. And don't buy Simply Safe. The opinions expressed in this segment do not reflect the views of the Industrial Maker channel. We highly encourage you to head to simplysafe.com slash industrial and get 20% off your Simply Safe system. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. Getting started with a hardwood flooring install in the first row is the most important thing to having success. I start by laying down two boards, making sure they're at 45 degrees to the wall since we're doing diagonal. And then I screwed down a sacrificial piece of flooring left over from the install in the back of the building to provide a solid backstop so that they wouldn't move. Then I just repeat the process, adding backstop pieces behind the board as I nail it in. And I actually do two backstop pieces screwed down, one at each end of the board, to really make sure it doesn't move because I wanna get this straight. After I got about halfway through the first row, I find it actually helps to beef up the overall structure. If you actually go back and start the second row and third row, and then you just repeat the process doing a little bit more of the first row, going back and doing a little more of the second and third row, kind of stair-stepping your way down until you get to the far wall. It is time consuming, but when you're working solo and you can't have people standing on the boards or things like that, this made sense for the way to do it. I'm sure there'll be some comments telling me a better way, but this does work. So if you're doing it on your own, this is a good way to do it, I think. So we finished installing the floor in the front third of the room, but we got a lot to do before we can actually start laying the floor down in the other half. We got to play musical workstation and move the whole miter saw setup and well, basically everything else from the whole front half of the room onto the part where we just installed the flooring. So the floor is cleared out and we can install the flooring on it in the front part of the room. So if you're looking at this and thinking that doesn't look good, you would be correct. I went to cut that up because I thought there was water damage or the old wood floor may have buckled because it wasn't installed with proper spacing against the wall. So I went to cut it up. Next thing you know, spark, boom, lights go out. I'm okay, good thing. Some idiot years ago had done a hack job electrical work and ran conduit right underneath the sub floor attached to it. And I sometimes complain about code making things difficult, et cetera. Yeah, sometimes it's there for a reason. <laughs> it's definitely not up to code. You have to have certain offsets between all your electrical work and the walls and subfloors to prevent exactly this type of thing from happening. Unfortunately, I called an electrician. I think we're just gonna be able to patch over this with plywood and keep going with the flooring. So that, that's the good news. So I lost a day because of hitting that electrical with my saw but I got all the subfloor patched up, ready to hit the ground running, putting the rest of the floor in. And today I got some help actually. Johnny Lambert, hey. AKA Johnny Builds. What's up? One of my best friends in the world, so I'm super stoked to have him here today. We're gonna see how much of this flooring we can bust out before we get to a really exciting project that, that we're gonna be working on. The video for that might come out before the flooring at the rate we're going, but who knows? So here's the plan. We did the first half of the flooring before we got here. We got these splines. These, like we did in the last room, slide right into the wood flooring on the groove side and basically create a new tongue on the other side of the wood so we can take the flooring the other direction from the center. Johnny Lambert, can he do it, folks? Last night I spent a few hours 
laying out a bunch of the flooring so I could roll the boric hair on it. We're kind of running into an issue because I don't want boric hair getting on top of the installed wood flooring. And the more flooring I installed, the smaller the area I have left to roll the boric hair on. So what I'm gonna do now is take all these boards with the boric hair from last night, now that they're dry, move them onto the installed flooring so I can bring in more boards and install some more boric hair. So we paused the floor in for about a week while Johnny was here and we built that roof deck. I'll throw a link to that video in the description if you haven't checked it out. And honestly, I didn't even realize how much I needed that break. It was just a ton of fun to have one of my best friends here, to have Cat around, all of us kind of hanging out, building that deck. And now I am reinvigorated, ready to power through the end of this flooring. So I have one issue I kind of want to throw out there just to see if anyone else has any ideas because I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. And that is the areas surrounding the existing stairs because they don't really lend themselves to traditional baseboard trim very well. Normally you just have stairs sitting on top of the floor and bolting into it like these stairs were to the old hardwood floor here. There actually is no way to remove these stairs. They are actually welded to the steel I-beams in the ceilings. So I had to just lay the flooring around the stairs as they were. And now I need to cover up the expansion gaps around these stairs. Thinking maybe uh, steel angle irons is like the best idea I had, or maybe just like a wood base kind of that sits around the posts. I'm not really sure. And it's particularly tricky because it's not just the square post. There's actually, there's a diagonal part of the side of the stairs that goes into the floor too. And that is gonna be a really tricky shape to cover up. Tradition, you gotta do the last triangle. Nice. First try. This actually was first try this time. It's a pretty piece. Sorry, I lied to you guys. That wasn't the last piece. There's actually this section behind me over here with the closet. I had a bunch of questions in the last flooring video about how I did the transition with the threshold between the diagonal and straight flooring as you entered the bedrooms from the hallway. So it's totally not necessary to do here, but I'm gonna take some extra time and do it so that I can show you guys how it's done. The first thing I've done here is cut a transition board that's gonna sit in the doorway between the main living area and the closet area here. And I've also cut some 45 degree ends on a couple pieces. So what I wanna see here is these boards at 45 lining up with this and then putting the boards in straight on the other side and making sure that if these are at 45, these are actually straight because walls aren't parallel and you don't want them going off to an angle too much so you end up with a funky gap between the walls. So now that I've got these angular pieces cut, they don't have the groove here where they need to sit in the tongue of the threshold piece. So I'll need to head to my router table to cut out the groove in these pieces.
While we're at the router table, I wanna give you guys a couple quick tips that will help if you install really any kind of flooring. If you wanna get a router table and eliminate a lot of the waste. Or if you wanna get really crazy and make your own tongue and groove flooring or shiplap, this will also apply. So you can buy a set of tongue and groove bits, which are a couple bits that make a tongue and make a groove. You just grab a piece of the hardwood flooring that you're using and you can use that to set the height of the bit so that your groove and tongue you cut will exactly match the tongue and groove on the flooring that you already bought. Now this is super handy for making use of cutoffs. When you're installing straight boards, you get a lot of boards from ends that are cut like this. Then take them over to your router table, use the tongue or groove bit, whichever side you need to recreate. And now instead of a cutoff, you've actually got a usable piece of tongue and groove flooring. Now we'll throw in one piece of safety advice here. When you're cutting the short end of a board, it can be pretty dangerous. So you're gonna wanna use something called a coping sled, which basically is gonna to serve to hold the piece perpendicular to the router bit. And that's gonna keep it from getting caught up, snapping back in your face, or even worse, pulling your finger into that spinning blade of death that they call a router. Since this is a five inch wide piece, or when I was cutting the diagonals, it was actually seven inches on the diagonal, it really isn't necessary. But if you get down in the smaller tongue groove, like the little three inch or two and a half peaches, 100% you're gonna wanna get a coping sled to make these types of cuts. Side lesson over, let's head back upstairs and finish this last little bit of floor. So I'll nail down this first angled board. And then as I'm nailing the other angled pieces across here, I'll use this threshold piece to make sure that these are all straight and that we don't have any gap or sawtooth pattern happening between the angled boards and the straight threshold piece. Now I got the threshold piece set in place and I'm gonna move into the closet. I'm also gonna note that I'm gonna leave this threshold piece floating, not nailed down. My thought is that it's going to actually be pinned on both sides by nailed pieces, so it shouldn't, shouldn't come up at all. And if there's any difference in movement between the way the diagonal flooring moves and the vertical flooring and the closet move, then that will allow more movement in the threshold and hopefully prevent it from popping. It is time for the big reveal. Here it is. So while you guys are checking out those beauty shots, I gotta fill you in on some amazing stuff that's been going on behind the scenes. I actually took another week off because I had two huge art YouTubers I'm huge fans of here to do a versus battle, painting a mural in the garage. Can't wait to share the content from that collab with you guys next month. And phase two of the reno is in full gear. Tomorrow I am diving into the full kitchen build out. I'm gonna be doing the countertops, cabinets, install, everything but forging the faucets. I'm gonna do myself. You definitely wanna sub to follow along for phase two because this is the part where we put in all the finishes and really make this thing come to life. And in case you guys missed the announcement, we got industrial merch now. A bunch of you have already bought your industrial gear. We're walking around looking super fly. So big thank you to all you guys. You rock. I can't believe it's been over a year and a half on this journey. My life has changed much for the better. So thank you all again for being here with me. That is it for this time and I will see you next time.